doing that? Hello, it is a beautiful overcast May day and I'm surrounded by poppies at the moment. Yeah, I... The ink that you can make with poppies is one of my favourite botanical inks and Holly, yeah. my lovely little assistant over here, has been busy collecting petals already and now we're going to collect some more and fill up this little basket and make some wonderful ink together. So thanks for joining us on our foraging expedition. Uh, check this out. So we've Daddy. we've almost filled our basket with poppy petals. Thanks for helping Holly. And it's just it's beautiful spending time in the field here together. Yeah, that's my sister. That's my papa. <laughs> and that's my assistant. That's my Holly. High five, Holly. <laughs> so here we have our luscious red poppy petals. And um, had a nice time in the field together. Lots of bumblebees flying around. As I now move inside to turn these poppy petals into ink, it seems like a great opportunity to remind you that if you are enjoying this, then make sure you subscribe to my channel. If you'd like to be reminded in future when I make new videos, make sure you hit the notification bell. Leave me a comment because I'd really love to hear how you've enjoyed this video. And if you make something with this ink, then I'd love to see it too. Here are some helpful things. A cutting board, a sharp knife, an empty jar, some water. You will need your poppy petals. A sieve, something to strain the petals through. A funnel so that you minimize the ink going on your work surface. Binder is optional. This is cherry sap, which I can forage here. I can just dissolve it in water and it makes a, a really great self-sourced binder. This is some in water. You can also purchase gum arabic, which is looks like this. It's acacia sap. Cloves will prevent your ink from getting moldy. They're antimicrobial and smell amazing. And you'll need a smaller jar to fill your ink into with those cloves. I have another assistant with me. So Holly's at kindergarten, Arvid is here. We're going to take these amazing poppy petals and chop them up and make some ink. So all you need is your poppy petals, a knife. You need to cut the petals so that the pigment can be released really easily. And this is what's great about this ink is that it doesn't need to be cooked. Just petals and water. Uh, and just slicing the petals is going to help release the pigment. So you need something to put it in a jar. Arvid's going to help put all the petals in a jar and some water. And then you just let it sit for a while and that's it. Super simple and it's a really lovely pigment. Wow, so many petals. <laughs> that's amazing. So I'll chop some up and then you put them in here, okay? Watch out with your fingers. Um, Watch out with other time. people's fingers. You want me to cut a little? Uh huh. There's Arvid. Hello, Arvid. Hi. Here, Arvid. I'm chopping up the petals like this, and then you can put them in the jar, okay? Yeah. And we're going to do it. When we put the water in, we just want it to cover the petals so that we have a nice concentration of pigment. We won't have this vibrant cadmium red. It's going to be more like a red wine color. No, um, cool. Thanks, Arvid. Have a gun to feel happier. Yeah, we have a lot. And then you can put a bit of water on. That's good. And then 
you can just let that sit on the windowsill somewhere. Sometimes a bit of sunlight, a bit of warmth may help to release the pigment. Yeah, some things really need warmth, but this basically would just need some time and it's like zero energy. It's just going to release all of that. You can start to see around the edges there, perhaps that it's releasing that pigment into the water and it's, it's going to be awesome. And this has just been sitting here overnight. So you could sit it a bit longer. Those, those petals that are still red on top, you could push those down and really get, get all the pigment from those ones as well. So just by letting them sit here in, in water overnight, we've got this really amazing uh, dark red pigment. We want to separate the petals from our ink. So you need another jar for this. Funnel, a strainer. And let's separate the ink from the petals. You can just see there, that's, oh, I, I think it's so, so wonderful to see how amazing that the, the petals just like turn white, translucent, having, having given their pigment to the water. And now I can just squeeze that out. So this, this looks very exciting and wonderful. And that's already quite a, a great amount of, of color to be, to start working with. So I recycle a lot of jars. This is the one I've popped some cloves into, which is gonna preserve the ink. Cloves are antimicrobial and prevent mold growth. And you can start using it like this. There are a couple more things you can do. You can add a binder and this cherry sap is something that I'm able to, to forage where I live or gum arabic. Now with the cherry sap that I have here, I put the cherry sap in water and it dissolves. Uh, the great thing about it is it's, it's water soluble and so that will dissolve into the water and then I can add some of that to my ink. And if you're unable to, to forage your own cherry sap, you can use gum arabic, which is acacia sap. So this is a resin that comes from the, the wounds of the tree. And there's also water soluble. It's like an ingredient which is used in some food. So it's a super safe material to be using. And you can get pretty affordable large quantities of it. You can look it up online if you're able and just add like a, a spoon of that to this. You can experiment a bit with the quantities. I don't have like set recipes. I just kind of um, go by feel. And adding binder to your ink is gonna change the consistency of the ink. And you will notice it behaves differently on the paper. And using different papers has also influenced the way the, the flow of the ink feels and the way it sits on the paper. Now we can start painting. We have some incredible poppy petal ink here. It's, yeah, as I mentioned, it's one of my favorite botanical inks and I can't wait to start using this fresh batch. So I'm just about to do a drawing of my friend Shannon's son, Tolling. I'll do the underdrawing with this pit oil based pencil and be using my poppy petal ink. So this is a, a fairly quick preliminary drawing to map out the shadow shapes and give me an idea of where I'm going to come and add the ink. This was about a 14 minute drawing and these quick sketches is something I practice weekly and you're all welcome to come join me every Tuesday. I'll put the link down in the description. Now I'm going to start using this poppy ink and I'm using synthetic watercolor brushes and for these big shadow areas over here I'm going to use this broad brush I spent about 27 minutes painting here and I just wanted to give you an impression of how rich and lovely this color is and it's so nice for layering with uh, different to perhaps like a, a classical black ink, you can do some really nice uh, transparent 
layering with these inks, which I just love. Thank you so much for joining me on this ink making and portrait painting adventure. This is something I love to do. All of these pieces in the background are made in natural ink. If you would like to learn more about natural ink making, you can check out my Ink Naturally class on the Sketchy Art School. You can check that out by following the link that's down in the description below. And please hit that thumbs up, subscribe, hit the little notification bell and leave me a comment. I would love to know how you enjoyed this video or maybe there's something you would like me to try making ink from. Maybe there's someone who you would like me to paint. I just love painting people and love making ink. So thank you for watching this and until next time.